Hey everyone, I have just bought a couple days ago a real set deck from a friend in our playgroup who didn't want to play with his deck anymore and I just suggested him that I would buy it from him for 25 euro and he agreed to this deck. Uh, I know it's a white black cleric set from Zendika Rising and this deck only contains cards from the set because um, yeah, that's the set format we play here. And I really liked the type Cleric and wanted always to have a Cleric deck, so that was also the reason I, uh, I just um, purchased this theme deck with black sleeves. And so now I want to make a short breakdown. You can see there's uh, 90 cards with 98 sleeves. And I will make a breakdown of the stack and cards and if it was worth to spend 25 euro and I will uh, look at every single card and compare the prices um, on card market because that's the platform I usually buy my uh, magic cards and I will always check the 30 days average price uh, for this list. And as I said it has uh, 90 cards and 98 black sleeves and yeah. The first card here is Null Priest of Oblivion for 2 mana, 1 colorless, 1 black. And yeah, it's a vampire cleric. Mm, and yeah, it is Kicker, that's the ability from Zendika Rising that you, you will pay additional mana. Here in this case it's uh, 4 mana, so in total you have to spend 6 mana to activate the ability when this creature enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, to return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So, yeah, it's really expensive. You have to spend uh, 6 mana, but for 2 mana it's a really sol solid creature because it has menace and lifelink. And yeah, you will see there are so many clerics in this deck, so it will be really helpful and useful. So, this creature we have another copy another so we have four copies of this creature the next card is cleric of life's bond um, also a vampire cleric for two mana uh, power two toughness two when this creature enters uh, the battlefield uh, ah when whenever another cleric enters the battlefield under, under your control you gain one life uh, whenever you gain life for the first time each turn, put a plus one plus one counter on Cleric of Life's Bond. It's really good because, yeah, we have only Clerics in this deck, and so every time we are playing a creature, uh, we will cast a creature, we will gain life. And if Clerics of Life's Bond is on the battlefield, it will get a counter, so it will be huge and, yeah, really dangerous for our opponent, so... He has to get rid of this creature somehow. Um, even though it's just a 2-2 two, a two, two for the first time and yeah, it costs only 2 mana. But it can be really huge. So this creature, we have... Ooh, 4 copies. And the next card is one of the most played uh, cards uh, in standard or yeah luminarch aspirant it's always in every deck in every white deck because yeah for two mana it's just a one one creature but at the beginning of combat on your turn put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control uh, so i mean you know that this card is for uh, in the arena played up and down every time you're playing against a white mono deck or white green or yeah however it always will be played in this format and it's so really powerful and really annoying when you're playing against this card yeah and it's cheap and it's, yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's really powerful so this card we have how many copies yeah it should be actually four and the next creature is Taborax Hope's Demise. Um, Demon Cleric for 3 mana. It's a 2-2 creature with flying. And Taborax 
as lifelink as long as it has five or more plus one plus one counters on it. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, put a plus one plus one counter on Tabrax. If the creature was a cleric, you may draw a card. If you do, you will lose one life. So yeah, this card, this creature, let us draw cards, which is, can be really helpful. And yeah, all the creatures are cleric, so it's also in a big advantage and it can also be a huge creature um yeah so how many is there another yeah so we have two copies of tabrax and the next creature is demon's disciple a human cleric for free mana when demon's disciple enters the battlefield each player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker hmm it's okay, it's just a free one creature, but hmm, it depends how what creatures are on the battlefield because against the token deck it's a really bad card. Hmm, so only when there's one strong creature on the battlefield and you have to play the demons disciple, so we'll just sacrifice your own creature and also the opponent. Hmm. Let's see, so yeah, we have another copy, so we have four copies of, of this creature and the next one is a foil marauding blight priest, a vampire cleric is just a common card, free mana, free two, whenever you gain life each opponent loses one life, so yeah it can work with yeah, with our um, where is this? Wait, I will just take a look. Cleric of Life is bond. Yeah, because always we will we'll always gain life, and our opponent will mm, lose one uh, lose one life. And yeah. Next card. Aura Skyclave Hero Fan. Uh, yeah, it's expensive, 4 mana, uh, 1 white, 1 swamp, uh, 2 colorless, it's a core cleric and, and has lifelink. Whenever Aura, Skyclave, Herophant or another cleric you control dies, return target cleric card of lesser converted mana cost from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's, uh, I mean it depends, that's why it's so expensive, because we could bring all the uh, cheap clerics back on the battlefield when Aura, for example, will die. And um, yeah, and the good thing is it has lifelink, but I don't think this card is really good. It's just too expensive for mana, just for a free free creature. I mean, maybe it if it would be a 4 4, it would be yeah better. Um, yeah, so we have one. Uh, then we have Aura with uh, in a borderless art. Two copies of this, or oh, three copies. Um, and then we have Attended Healer. Uh, four mana, also expensive. Clor core Cleric. Whenever you gain life for the first time each turn, create a 1 1 White Cat creature token. Then we can play, uh, pay free mana. Another target cleric gains lifelink until end of turn. Hmm. Yeah, the problem is those creature. It's really useful because they have lifelink. I mean, they are uh, clerics, and we will gain life. And the problem is, it's just too weak, too free. Uh, it will create one one white cat creature tokens. Hmm. So. The, yeah, it's just those creature tokens are just too weak, and I don't think um, it fits into this deck. But yeah, I have to play several times to just um, yeah see what card what cards actually really uh, work f together in this deck. Mm. Yeah, then we have three copies of that. Next creature is Scion of the Swarm, Vampire Cleric, 5 mana, 2 black, 
three colorless flying. Whenever you gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on Scion of the Swarm. Free free. Um, okay, yeah, this card can be can be really good in this deck. Uh, we have uh, Aura with Lifelink, um, the Null Priest also with Lifelink. Yeah, so it will gain a lot of counters uh, during the game and can be really dangerous for the opponent. And the good thing is, uh, it's not easy to block this creature because it is flying. Um, and then we have three, even four, four copies. And the next card is Drana, the last blood chief. Five mana, uh, it's a mystic rare. Legendary creature, vampire cleric, flying. Whenever Drana, the last blood chief attacks, Defending player chooses a non-legendary creature card in your graveyard. Uh, you return that card to the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it. The creature is a vampire in addition to its other types. Um, yeah, this is a really interesting card because we can just bring a, a lot of clerics back on the battlefield. Um, because yeah, defending player has to choose a non-legendary card in our graveyard, and we have only um, clerics, so yeah, can be really good in, in this deck. And it has four four also flying, so it's really uh, I think it's a really good card in my opinion. Um, we have two copies. Oh, this one is also foil. Uh, then we have this disenchant uh, instant, so we will destroy target artifact or enchantment for two mana. Yeah, nothing special. Then we have another instant, soul shatter. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or a planeswalker with the highest converted mana cost among creatures and planeswalker they control. Yeah, this is uh, yeah, this is a really good card. Free mana. The only disadvantage is we cannot choose which creature. But when, for example, there are um, two free creatures with the same mana amount, we cannot just choose. So our opponent will just choose. But anyway, it's really good because you can also just kill a Planeswalker for free mana and uh, this card was also really often played in Arena. So let's see how many copies. Yeah, four copies. The next one is Feed the Swarm. Sorcery. Destroy target creature or enchantment and opponent controls. You lose life equal to the permanent convert mana cost. This is an amazing card because you can just get rid of yeah, so many good cards in arena. For just two mana you will of course lose uh, life, but I mean it doesn't matter. The only disadvantage here is it's a sorcery, so you can just play it in your turn. Mm, yeah, but it's a really good card. So we have two copies and the next one is Inscription of Ruin. Uh, yeah, it is also kicker, four mana, so in total you have to pay seven. Yeah, three black and four colorless, choose one. If this spell was kicked, choose any number instead. Target opponent discards two cards. Uh, return target creature card with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Destroy target creature with converted mana cost three or less. Hmm, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's free mana. You can just choose one of, among those uh, spells, uh, those abilities. But the problem is for kicker cost is just the kicker cost is just too high. Uh, seven mana um, and when you're playing one against one or I mean best of three you just uh, you don't have the time you have to play really fast uh, it's a fast format um, and you you will just probably always can use the, the, the spell for three mana and not for seven it's just yeah 
it's too expensive those effects are pretty solid because you can just choose among three and maybe in this case the, the second one would be also really good so we can just bring back uh, cleric on the battlefield mm, yeah so let's see i don't think i would just put this card into the deck uh, so yeah three copies the next one is blood chiefs first so oh it's a sorcery with the with the creature on it with drana kicker free uh, destroy target creature or planeswalker with converted mana cost two or less if this spell was kicked instead destroy target creature oh yeah i remember that one that one is really strong um, because for one mana you can just kill a creature with uh, converted mana cost two or less planeswalker is really difficult because i think there is only one it, and it's a uh, ran um but for four mana you can just take out every creature and every planeswalker so yeah this one is really good um three four copies and the next one is Shadow's Verdict, 5 mana, 2 black, 3 colorless, sorcery, exile all creatures and planeswalkers with converted mana of cost 3 or less from the battlefield, and all the creature and planeswalker cards with converted mana cost of 3 less from all graveyards. Hmm, it's, it can be good, uh, 5 mana is just um, too much. And we will exhale all creature and planes work of convert mana of cost three or less. Maybe it's also can be useful against those decks uh, from Innistrad, especially or Kamigawa, where our opponent is playing cards from the graveyard. So we can just exhale all of them. Um, so two. And the next one's an artifact, Mall of the Skyclays. Yeah, this is so strong. Free mana. When Mall of the Skyclays enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. That was pretty amazing for in the set because um, usually you have to just pay the equip cost. Uh, but I think all of the artifacts in the set. Uh, when you will play them for the first time you can just attach them immediately so that was uh, uh, this is really good and equipped creature gets plus two plus two enters flying and first strike yeah this is a really strong card mall of the skyclaves and equip cost is four mana two white two uh, colorless but I mean, when you are just play this card for the first time, it's just three mana. It has two F uh, abilities, and you will get get also plus two plus two. Also very good to attach it to our creatures with lifelink. And we have Mall of the Skycliffs twice. Then we have another relic uh, artifact, Relic Vial. Uh, for three mana, we can pay two and sacrifice creature. We'll draw a card. Hmm. So I think maybe we can use the the creature who creates cats, so we can just uh, kill those cats and draw cards. Or I mean, there are several cards where we can just take the uh, our creatures back on the battlefield. So maybe it's not that bad to just to sacrifice also those uh, creatures. And as long as you control a cleric, relic vial has whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So then we have a land, a Maria Shattered Skyclave, Skyclave, Skyclave. That's that's the way. Skyclave. As a Maria shot, uh, Shattered Skyclave enters the battlefield, you may pay free life. If you don't, it enters the battlefield tapped, and it it's produce, uh, it's, it produces one white mana. But then we have a sorcery on the other side. And 
it says wow it's really expensive seven and we just need also three white mana create two four four white angel warrior creature tokens of with flying known angel creatures you control gain indestructible until your ne next turn yeah this was really um good in zendika rising uh, those uh, double land cards because you, you could just choose if you have enough uh, land cards on the on, uh, on your hand you can just always play uh, yeah the sorcery or instant or also the creature on the other side and it's so really it's really flexible in this case mm, but yeah you have to wait uh, seven seven turns until you can just play a Mewis call and you just need to play also every turn a land but then yeah it's not that bad create two four four white angel uh, uh, warrior creatures tokens with flying mm, i mean it would be much better if it's an instant because all the non-angel creatures uh, gain also lifeline and i think those uh, double land land cards are really also expensive maybe more than five euro I, yeah I, I will just check it and i will just uh, i will just um, yeah show the price uh, on the in this video yeah then we have another uh emeria shadow skyclave yeah those are the same cards yeah then we have hagra uh, brute pit of the land it enters the battlefield tapped and it produces one one black mana and on the other side it's an instant hagria mauling for well, four mana two black two colorless this spell costs one uh, less to cast if an opponent controls no basic lands destroy target creature hmm, i mean our opponent will always have basic lands so it's yeah four mana but we can just destroy a creature so it's not that bad then we have malakir mire it enters the battlefield tapped produces one black mana let's see malakir rebirth choose target creature you lose two life until end of turn that creature gains uh, when this creature dies, return it to the battlefield, tapped under its owner's control. Hmm. This is really good for one mana. Uh, you can just um, cast it and your creature uh, yeah, will return to the battlefield. So you can just attack and, and then you will just um, cast it and yeah, pretty good for one mana. Then we have Kabira Plateau, uh, enters the battlefield tapped, add one mana. And let's take a look. Kabira Takedown. Kabira Takedown deals damage equal to the number of creatures you control to target creature or planeswalker. Huh, can be really effective against planeswalker. Uh, since we don't have so many creatures on the battle battlefield, maybe two, three, we cannot take down, uh, take out big creatures. But against Plains Planeswalker, it can be can be really useful. Uh, then we have another Kabira Plateau, another one. Oh, another one. So the next one is Bright Climp Pathway. Yeah. Uh, in Kal time there were also four, I think. Uh, those double uh, double lands where you can just choose, and the best thing about those cards is, yeah, you don't have to tap them. They enter the battlefield untapped, and you can just have uh, a land with white mana or with black mana. And it looks really cool. It's a uh, it's here we have it's borderless especially the black one which produces uh, black mana looks amazing grim climb pathway yeah 
and yeah i think those cards are really po uh, popular and uh, therefore also expensive we have wow another one wow another one bo bodiless bodiless is even more expensive then we have a bright clean pathway uh, in foil let's take a look on the other side and the other side green climb pathway looks like this also really cool and then we have base camp base camp enters the battlefield tapped um, you can tap it add two color uh, add colorless mana and or add one mana of any color spend this mana only to cast cleric rogue warrior or wizard spell or to activate an ability of cleric rogue uh, or your wizard so yeah this is actually for those party decks in zendikar yeah it's not that good mm. then we have lands yeah planes let's see how many we have those uh, yeah full art unfortunately they are not uh, foil or oh, this one is foil Oh, it looks really beautiful. And then we have swamps. This is the deck and yeah i will just check the prices so here we are now we can see the whole deck here and actually it was a pretty good deal for 25 euro uh, we just got a deck uh, which is uh, more than 50 euro worth um, those cards are actually not that expensive um, they are really cheap but those ones who are really expensive are the double lands and here we have Gr uh, green climp uh, pathway four times also in um, borderless and those cards are really good because you can just um, choose either you will play a swamp or a plains and the land enters the battlefield untapped that's a huge advantage and uh, also in cal time we have uh, those cards but the opposite colors here we have uh, like brit uh, bright climp pathways uh, black white then we have also i think in my other deck landfall it's uh, green white and in cal time it's just the opposite like um, uh, yeah i just forgot but uh, you know uh, for sure w uh, which lands those are and then we have also like um, those lands where you can just uh, choose between the creature or land or instant land uh, sorcery land and in this deck we have also Kabira, uh, Takedown, Malaki Rebirth, uh, Hygra, Hagra, Mauling, um, also Emiria's Call, which is really expensive for 8 mana. But nonetheless, those are really good because you have always uh, extra cards you can just play. If you have uh, too many lands uh, in your hand, and yeah, as I said, um, yeah, Grim Climp Pathway is a really good card. Uh, expensive because each of those of those cards is like five euro worth and yeah and the other cards are yeah it's okay um they they work together well because it's a cleric deck uh, and yeah i will also build the second arena and then i will just play and yeah thank you for watching and uh, if you like those videos if you like the set matches i will post uh, in future more set matches um, subscribe or, or, or comment also you can comment comment and uh, suggest what can i um, make better um, what i can just uh, how i can improve or enhance this cleric deck because um, yeah i see there are a lot of creature and just cards where i can just destroy creatures but i bet uh, yeah this deck can be uh, enhanced somehow and if you have any suggestions 
please write it in the comments and yeah see you see you next time then bye bye